Making your own clothes is awesome. But let's face it, sewing can get expensive. What? And unless you really enjoy the process, you may find yourself wondering, why would I make it when I can purchase it for half the price? It's a good question. Now, I didn't research this, but I did do a quick scroll on Google and discovered that circle skirts seem to run anywhere from $12 to well over $100. I also did a quick scroll on Google to determine how much fabric is running these days, and it seems that for a cotton or cotton blend you can get fabric by the yard as low as $3. I cannot speak for the quality. But it seems that you can get it for a fairly low price. However, this is 45 inch wide, so if you're making a circle skirt, depending on your height, the length of the skirt, etc., the minimum amount you will probably need is about 4 yards. Maybe you could get away with 3 and 3 quarter yards. Let's say four yards at $3 a yard. There's $12 right there. Yep, you might as well purchase the skirt ready-made because you're going to be paying the exact same amount you would to purchase the fabric, and then you're gonna have to go through the effort of making it. Now, there are many reasons to make your own clothes and not purchase them ready-made, but let's leave that discussion for another time. Let's instead focus on dollar. Is there a way to make a circle skirt for under $12? I'm so glad you asked. Yes, yes there is. Visit a thrift store and check out the linen section. Let's make some circle skirts out of tablecloths. Round tablecloths. Bonus points if it has trim on it. I'm gonna make two circle skirts, a little bit different from each other, so we have some variation. I'm going to be starting with the natural color tablecloth with lace. The only supplies I will need are the tablecloth, some thread, and some elastic. First, I'm going to measure where I want the skirt to end up. Happy occurrence, the hem is already finished with the lace, so I won't even have to worry about the hem. Secondly, I'm going to lay it flat, fold it in half, fold it one more time, and match up the hem. Then, measure up from the hem the length I want plus the seam allowance for the waist. I'm going to take my remaining circle of fabric and use that to make a facing. This part's going to be a little bit of patchwork, but it's going to be on the inside of the skirt, so it really doesn't matter too much. I need a measurement to be able to fit into the top of the skirt, so the piece will be about 2.5 inches wide, and for the length, the same as the waist opening. Patchworking the pieces together, I'm going to sew them at an angle rather than an even seam allowance because if I sew an even seam allowance, it's going to get kind of flouncy and I don't want that. On this occasion, that is. I'm not anti-flounce. Once I've sewn all those pieces together and made sure that it fits nicely at the waist, I'm going to go ahead and pin it all along the top of the waist, right sides facing each other. I stitched that together and then understitched the facing. I gave it a good press and then pinned the facing into place and stitched it an inch and a quarter away from the top edge. But I didn't stitch all the way around. I left a little opening for, you guessed it, elastic. To determine the length of the elastic, I just circle it around my waist and pull it up until it's comfortable. Not too tight, not too loose. Give it about an inch overlap and cut. I then sent the elastic through the channel with my bodkin. You can also use a safety pin. Once the two ends of elastic are peeking out, you can overlap them about an inch and then sew them together. Give it a little shimmy to make the elastic go all the way in. Seal up that little opening with a straight stitch. Give it another little shimmy, and the skirt is complete. On to the next skirt. We'll be using this beautiful tablecloth right here, which was actually brand new in package. It was originally $29.99. Wow! $3.75, 70 inches round, 100% cotton, never been used for $3.75. That's pretty good. For this skirt, the supplies needed are the tablecloth and a zipper and optionally a scrap of fabric, but we'll get to that later. I began by measuring up from the hem 5 inches because I was going to cut that off. If you're thinking, is she going to measure and mark all the way around the hem? No, no I am not, because I am endeavoring to work smarter, not harder, take shortcuts, etc. So I'm going to use the method of cutting a little and then folding it over and using that as a guide. But wouldn't it be easier to just fold the whole thing into quarters and then cut through all the layers? Yes, yes it would, but there's a great possibility of cutting it crooked, also this fabric is the yuck. Next, a little mathematics are necessary. First thing I need to figure out is what I want the opening to be for the waist. I want mine to be 30 inches. Then I write down 3.14 multiplied times 2. Just ignore that top number for a moment. That and the answer are the only numbers that are possibly going to be different if you make this skirt. The rest of this puzzle stays the same. So multiply 3.14 times 2. That equals 6.28. Essentially, you'll always be using 6.28. Of course, you could just try to remember 6.28, but I personally find it easier to just remember pi 3.14, but that's me. Now we can bring that top number back into the mix. I'm going to take my 30 and divide it by 6.28, and I come up with 4.77. So really, all you need to figure is what the opening for your waist is, so you can do this same exact equation for your own skirt. 
I folded the tablecloth in half and marked the very center of it in blue chalk. Then I just measured from that chalk point 4.77 inches around in a circle. I made doubly sure that equaled 30 inches, actually 15 because it's folded in half. Of course, with the 30 inch opening, it's going to fit on my waist, but it's not going to make it over my hips, so some more work is required. I need to cut a center back seam, but I have to make sure that I'm cutting it straight along the grain line because a circular piece of fabric at some point is going to be on the bias, so I can't just cut it anywhere. Otherwise, when I sew in the zipper, it's going to be a bit bubbly. And although that's ideal for drinks, for skirts and zippers, it's not ideal. The way you can locate the grain line is you can look really close on some fabrics, you can see the grain line, but it does do a number on your eyes, or you can just tug on the fabric and if it stretches a bit, gives a little bounce, that's the bias. If it doesn't do that, you've found the grain line. So I cut right along the grain line to make the center back seam. This next step is optional, but if you want to, you can do what I did, which was cut it again to make a side seam. I took the remaining fabric from the hem, seam ripped it, and pressed it so I could utilize as much of it as possible. Then I found the grain line again because here I'm cutting out the waistband and I definitely don't want any sort of give on the waistband. I cut out a rectangular shape of about 15 inches and then cut out another rectangular shape and cut it in half. And there was my waistband. Now here's where those side seams come into play. I also used the remaining fabric to cut out these weird pieces here because I didn't have quite enough fabric to make what I was hoping for. Again, I turned to patchworking and put some little pieces together to create pocket says. I stitched up that center back seam, leaving roughly seven inches open at the top. I took some scrap fabric and sewed it to that seven inch opening. That will act as a stabilizer for my zipper. You can also use interfacing, but if you've got scrap fabric laying around, it works just as well in my personal opinion and you don't have to spend the extra dollars. I held the skirt up to myself to figure out where my hands usually enter pockets, mark that spot, and that's where I pinned the pockets in. After making the pocket attachments to each side of the skirt, I took my new shapes and sewed them together on the side seams, circling around the pockets. I then joined the side seams of the waistband and pressed it up a seam allowance on one side. Before pinning the skirt to the waistband, I had to ease the skirt, which is where I used the biggest stitch on my machine, all the way around the top edge of the waist opening, just like gathering, except I don't pull it up to fit. Because it should already fit pretty well. Matching side seams, I pinned the waistband to the skirt and stitched them together. Once again, using the biggest stitch on my machine, I closed up that seven inch gap and parted the waistband. I folded the waistband in half and marked where the zipper was going to start. I like to pin my zippers in place and then hand baste them in. Not absolutely necessary, it just makes for a faster, smoother zipper insertion. And I just opened up that basting stitch to release the zipper. It would have been easier with a seam ripper, but that wasn't within arm's reach and the scissors were. Next, I folded over that waistband, pinned it into place, and did a bit more hand stitching. It's finished. All but the hem. I'm going to hang it overnight, and then tomorrow I'm just going to make sure it's all even, and then hem it, and then I can show you how it turned out. I am feeling like I want to try to curl my hair. I'm going to try a new no heat styling tool that my sister lent me. I want to see if one, I can actually figure it out. Two, does it actually curl my hair? Three, can I sleep in it comfortably? I've tried several non-heat styling tools, sponge curlers, as seen on TV, foam rollers, the flexi rollers, even rags. The problem with the tools for me is though they always say they're comfortable to sleep in, I have never found that to be true. So I was very curious about this one. I was really hoping that I was doing this correctly. By the way, I just realized I don't hate the red eye look. I'm kind of liking it. Oh, I lost the other scrunchie. Where is it? I think maybe there was only one, so I just used some hair ties. Hopefully that was allowed. I removed the claw clip because I thought I was supposed to and then I was like, oh wait, I think everyone on social media just sleeps with the claw clip in, so I left it in, but I'm still not positive that was correct. It was then that I realized that my creature was staring at me quite concerned. Not to worry, dear, just doing weird human stuff again. Good morning. So, fun fact about me, I'm not a morning person. Okay. Let's just see how the hair turned out. Wow. Hold on, we gotta do the flip. Ooh. 
the discomfort I experienced is is becoming worth it. Uh, yeah, I was not comfortable last night. Um, this going like this on this side, right? I had to sleep on my back. I am a side sleeper, so it was really grumpy and uncomfortable. And finally, I laid on my side, like, right like that. And I was like, fine. It was so uncomfortable. And like early, early in the morning, I woke up and for some reason had the sense to go like this. I just tuck it like this. And then I was able to sleep on my side comfortably. It took me that long to figure it out. I am so impressed. Like I did not think that would happen. And it's so soft. Yeah, thank you to my sister for letting me borrow that. We'll just see how long uh, the curls last, but uh, yeah, I think uh, I think I want one. <laughs> For finishing up the skirt, I laid it flat and measured from the waist down to make sure it was all the same length and then gave it a trim. I should probably do that to my hair too. Anyway, I finished it all with a teeny tiny hem because for some reason the skirt ended up being a bit shorter than I wanted it, but I think it turned out pretty nice anyway. I gave it a quick press and that was it.